call Andy. Libby, call me Andy. Okay, good. That's what I'm looking for. <laughs> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Beloved friends, in the waters of baptism, Craig died with Christ and rose with Christ to newness of life. May Craig now share with Christ, Christ's eternal glory. Please join in praying with us from your program. may we be seated. At this point, I invite Maria to come forward and share with us some words of remembrance. Please, Maria.
Javon and I were talking the other day and I realized that dad's the lucky one. He's crossed the finish line and he's not sick anymore. He's not hurting anymore. We're the ones left behind to remember. Remember the, the good things if we can. One of my favorite memories is when I was a little girl and he would fix the, the Volkswagen. He would, he first he would go to the library and because back in the 60s, copiers were not something that were readily available, he would hand write all of his notes from whatever book he was accessing. And pages of notes. And I, I know this because as we were cleaning out the Florida house last year, I found this stack of, I think, five or six, seven pages. And he told me that's what that was. It was notes from when he had to fix the, the bug. And then he would proceed to lay out a nice clean sheet and everything methodically went out on this sheet in a particular order. And I wasn't to touch it. I was probably four or five years old. And he would proceed to take, you know, everything out of the car that needed to come out and make the repairs according to his notes. Now, to my mind, when you take something apart, you put it back together and there shouldn't be any parts left over. But dad being the engineer that he was, he understood that if you can take something apart and put it back together with fewer moving parts, then you reduce the risk of whatever you were fixing breaking down again. So there were always parts left over. And of course, I didn't understand this, but he knew that it would work better. But he would always say, let's go for a test drive. And I took him literally. We were going for a test drive to see if it worked. He knew, of course, that it worked. So, you know, the truth was mom needed milk or something from the grocery store and had been waiting all day for the car to be fixed. So I'd be in the back seat like this out the back of the VW bug window watching for parts to fall out of the car. And, of course, nothing did because he knew that it was gonna work. He knows that we're gonna be fine. He knows that he's in a much, much better place. He's not hurting, he's not, his body's not twitching around. He is with his forever love now. And I know because Javon and I saw Corky looking past us the other day right after dad left, just giving us the, not giving us, but looking past us and looking at dad's hospital bed with the strangest look I've ever seen on his face, just cocking his head and his eyes were huge. And I can just imagine he was sitting there holding hands with mom and mom was probably doing this to him. <laughs> so he's in a much better place and he's got all of our love. God bless you all for being here, thank you. May we stand. Oh God, Almighty Father, our faith professes that your son died and rose again. Mercifully grant that through this mystery, your son Craig, who has fallen asleep in Christ, may ri rejoice to rise again through him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> For our first reading, we, we invite Taylor, please. First reading. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for coming today. Um, I just have a quick reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will provide for all peoples. On this mountain, he will destroy the veil that veils all peoples. The web that is woven all, over all nations, he will destroy death forever. The Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces. The reproach of his people will remove from the whole earth, for the Lord has spoken. On that day it will be said, Behold our God, to whom we look to save us. This is the Lord for whom we look. Let us rejoice and be glad that he has saved us. The word of the Lord. Thank you, Thank you everybody. Me to the glory of your name, 
Second reading, we invite Maria. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. We do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, about those who have fallen asleep, so that you may not grieve like the rest who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose, so too will God, through Jesus, bring with him those who have fallen asleep. Indeed, we tell you this on the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will surely not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself, with a word of command, with the voice of an archangel and the trumpet of God, will come down from heaven and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Thus we shall always be with the Lord, Therefore, console one, another, console one another with these words. The word of the Lord. Please may we stand. The Lord be with you. And with your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. The kingdom of heaven will be taken, will be like ten virgins who took their lambs and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish while five were wise. The foolish ones, when taking their lambs, brought no oil with them, but the wise ones brought flax of oil with their lambs. Since the bridegroom was long delayed, they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, there was a cry, Behold the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those virgins got up, trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise ones replied, No, for there may not be enough for us and for you. Go instead to the merchants and buy some for yourselves. While they, were, or while they went off to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went into the wedding feast with him. Then the door was locked. Afterwards, the other virgins came and said, Lord, Lord, open the door for us. But he said in reply, Amen, I said to you, I do not know you. Therefore, stay awake, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Thank you. 
Please be seated. <clears throat> My dear friends, On behalf of our parish family, I would like to extend our deepest condolences to Craig's family. I know there are many who are watching us from all over the world, friends and family. Um, you are participating in this celebration with us. We want to extend our deepest condolences to you. Today, the gospel says, stay awake. Be on alert. Be vigilant. Do not be taken on our ways. This is from the parable of the foolish virgins that was told against the cultural background that is so different from ours today. In the Jewish custom and tradition, the bridegroom and his friends will go and fetch the bride from the bride's family on the day of wedding. <clears throat> The ceremony took place at night. So, usually the bridegroom and his party would usually set out at sunset, depending the distance, however. Meanwhile, the bride and the, her own bridesmaid awaited for the arrival of the bridegroom and his party. Upon their arrival, the bridesmaid will join the party as they escorted the bride to her bridegroom's family, where the party would take place. They carried lamps. <clears throat> they carried lighted lamps for the night journey. You know, there was no electricity, so there was no electricity on the streets. And there, was no, there were no cars. <laughs> so they had to make it. So they had to take something to show them the right path. They carried the lamps for the journey. And as they were going, they would be singing love songs. You know, it was a beautiful celebration. And it was this parable that was read us today. The bridegroom was delayed at his arrival, and he came later than he was expected. Meanwhile, naturally expected. <clears throat> The bridesmaid, who did not take extra oil, we are running short of their oil. And, you know, they fell asleep. Uh, by the time he, was come, he came in, they kind of went to buy some oil for themselves. So, by the time they came back from getting more oil for their lambs, those who were ready with their lamps and oil, they escorted the bride to her new home. And they were locked out or left behind because they were not present when the bride's uh, groom's party arrived. Now, <clears throat> what is the lesson of this parable? In this parable, St. Matthew was telling Christians of those days and Christians of today, 
and all of us who are here that sometimes the coming of the Lord may be delayed more beyond our expectation that we have to be awake. We have to be vigilant. But do you know most importantly, Father Benson does not know the hour my own will be. And you sitting there, you don't know the hour your time will be. You watching from all over, you don't know the hour the Lord is coming for you. Therefore, you have to dress up always for action so that when he knocks, you will say, I am willing, I am ready, I'm willing. You don't have to say, <clears throat> give me a few minutes, let me go and get ready. Uh, I need a few more seconds. You cannot say that. I remember Maria calling the office, asking me to come to visit her dad, Craig. You know, I asked her, you know, um, are you sure I have to come today? She said, I don't know, but, <laughs> you know, with the look of things, we don't know when. That was why I chose this gospel passage. With the look of things, it could be any day. If Maria knew when it would have been, she would say, okay, please, Father, come today. It's going to be today. But she didn't know. And Craig, her dad, didn't also know. So the, best, the thing is, we have to be ready, always. In that parable, the bridegroom stands for Christ. We don't know when Christ is coming. We have to be ready. The bride stands for the church, and the ten bridesmaids are members of the church. But the lambs are the faith of Christians. We have to have our lambs lit always. You, who is a believer, you have to have your lamp, your faith, so that your faith will show others where. Your faith will always direct others. You wouldn't say, you know what, I've been a Christian all my life, therefore, I let me take a break. <laughs> the point is, there is no vac vacation in this our belief. You can't take a vacation. It is every day. And you know the interesting part of it. The church or God expects us to improve every day that grow better, become better version of what he wants us. So if you are taking break, if you are taking vacation from your faith, you are taking a risk. That's what this parable is all about. And the oil is the good works. The good works we have. You have to have that lamp and the oil. So that if somebody asks you, show me or whether you believe in God, you say, yes, this is what I can show for my belief. Your faith should help to transform the world. Your faith should show itself in the way you live your life, the good works you have. And the lamp without oil is faith without good works. Therefore, my dear friends, today we have come to celebrate the life of a man who lived in hope, who kept his light burning brightly, and whose oil never ran dry. And that man was Craig. Craig was a gentleman. He was very respectful of everybody. He worked hard to provide for his family. At a time, taking two jobs and going, putting himself through education, through school. You know what that means? Because sometimes Father Benson may complain, oh, I'm going to school, I'm doing some work, I'm getting crazy. He was doing two jobs, providing for his family, going to school. It's a challenge to many of us today. That was Craig. Even though he was very detailed, as Maria said, 
in doing things, arranging this, all the boxes, this and this. Even though he was very detail-oriented because of his work as an engineer, he never looked down on other people who were not as detailed as he was. That's it. His family will miss his presence, but his love for them will always abide in their hearts. The love he had in spending quality time, finding time in his busy schedule to spend with his family, those are memorable moments they will always cherish and love. Therefore, my dear friends, it's no more about Craig. He has done the role. He is now in the presence of God. It's about you and I. The message today is keep awake. For you and I do not know the day, the hour. Yes, we have to be alert, be watchful, and live with hope. And most importantly, let our own lamp shine so that others through us will know God as we stand and pray. Dear friends, God, the mighty Father, raised Christ his son from the dead. With confidence, we ask him to save all his people, living and the dead. For Craig, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, may he now be admitted to the company of the saints, we pray. Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the members of Craig's family and his friends, may they find consolation and peace, healing for their sorrow, and strength in their faith, we pray. Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. prayer. For Craig's loved ones and his friends who have gone before him, for all the deceased members of the Dewar, Loki, and Colburn families, May they be united in an everlasting home, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all caregivers, may they be blessed as they continue to find the strength to undertake their work with compassion and love, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who struggle with Parkinson's disease and all who are sick, in body and spirit. May the community still uphold them as children of God, as God's healing love wraps us all, we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For all who are gathered here today and for those unable to be here. When we come to the end of our allotted days, may we, with Craig, be welcomed into the arms of God's mercy, we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. Lord God, giver of peace and healer of souls, hear the prayers of your family who are gathered here. Forgive the sins of all who sleep in Christ and grant them a place in the kingdom through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated.
Pray, my dear friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. For the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his church. Let us pray as we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your son, Craig. We beseech you of mercy that he who did not doubt your son to be a loving savior may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, mighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, in him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we are clear. Sit or you kneel as you feel comfortable. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like they do fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have heard us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, 
and David the bishop and all the clergy. Remember your son, Craig, who you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, we bless Joseph, our spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may marry to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Please may we stand. <clears throat> My dear friends, at the Savior's command, I'm formed by divine teaching we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from our distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your way, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Dear friends, let us offer each other a sign of peace. Please, may we sit or you kneel as you feel comfortable. <clears throat> Dear friends, behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Well, I say the word and my soul shall be healed. Now straight. For communion today, we will have you come forward in two lines on either side of the casket. Uh, please keep socially distance in between families. If you are not Catholic but would like to come forward to receive a blessing, we simply cross our arms in front of our chest.
Let us pray. Please may we stand. Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey, mercifully grant that, strengthened by it, our brother Craig may come to the eternal table of Christ who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> My
My dear friends, before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother. May our farewell express affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. <laughs> To you, O Lord, we commend our brother Craig. <clears throat> In the sight of this world, he is now dead. In your sight, may he live forever. Forgive whatever sins he may have committed through human weakness, and in your goodness, grant him everlasting peace. We make our prayers to Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear friends, in peace, let us take our brother to his final place of rest. May the angels lead you into paradise. May the holy ones come to welcome you and take you to the holy city, the new and the eternal Jerusalem.
sweet 